Hello everyone, thank you for attending this conference. My name is Darwin and today we are going to talk about improving the VSCAN for indoor positioning using Wi-Fi ready maps in wearables and IoT devices. I've divided this presentation into five parts introduction, related work, methods description, experiments and results, and finally conclusions. I will be happy to answer your questions at the end of this presentation. So let's begin. Nowadays, Internet of Things technologies have become indispensable for many companies in different domains, giving rise to new and complex network with millions of devices connected throughout the Internet. Thus, many IoT devices, and in particular many wearable devices, are heavily used in indoor scenarios and are more and more requiring some indoor localization features to enable a variety of location-based services. Wi-Fi fingerprinting technique is one of the most broadly used techniques for indoor positioning systems, thanks to the fact that many Wi-Fi routers and access points are already deployed in public and private areas. However, it is not efficient enough to run it in some devices, such as power-constrained wearables, thus some authors have proposed methods based on dimensionality reduction in some linear and nonlinear transformation, clustering algorithms such as k-means, affinity propagations, dbscan and others. dbscan is a clustering method used to split the radio map into high density and low density clusters, divided it into n non-overlapping reduced radio maps. Then in the operational phase the search has two steps, a core search to identify the closest centroid. In this case, the centroids uh, are computed for each cluster due to that they are not provided in DBSCAN, and a finite grain search to obtain the closest reference fingerprints to the operational one. When DBSCAN is forming the cluster, many fingerprints can be considered as noise and it might affect the position estimation. Here, we introduce a new DevScan post-processing method, which is applied when the number of noise samples exceeds 10% of the total size of the dataset. So we establish some rules devoted to group noise points in cluster with higher level of similarity or correlation. Moreover, we provide an additional analysis of combining DBSCAN plus PCA for further dimensionality reduction. Let's see the related work. Shan et al. propose an algorithm based on hierarchical classification and k-mean clustering. The improved k-means is used to divide the indoor environment into overlapping zones. In contrast to k-means, which performs a partitioning of the data space into non-overlapping Baroni cells. This new algorithm allows having a Wi-Fi fingerprint in more than one cluster. As a result, they reduce the execution time and improve the positioning accuracy with a low average positioning error. Abu Sarah Dole used a different method to reduce the radio map. This method is devoted to eliminating non-relevant APs, reducing the positioning error. The authors use the fast orthogonal search to identify relevant information in the radio map and keep the main characteristics of the dataset. As a result, the FOS provide a better performance and lower positioning error than PCA. The adult based their work in supervised machine learning using Gaussian process manifold kernel dimensionality reduction in the offline phase to detect and extract the most relevant feature in the radio map. Consequently, the authors reduce the positioning error with this method, providing a better performance than when the PCA based method is used. In contrast with k-mean clustering, DBSCAN doesn't need a predefined number of clusters. It forms the clusters based on two parameters, epsilon, which determines the distance to form the neighborhood, and mean points, which is the minimum number of samples to create a cluster. Once the clusters are generated, there are some samples labeled as noise, and they are excluded from the clusters, as you can see here in this example. Here we have the core, the border, and the noise samples. Under optimal conditions, DBSCAN is capable of detecting and excluding odd layers from the clusters. However, 
Due to the heterogeneity of the dataset, the cluster distribution is not homogeneous and therefore some relevant samples might be excluded from them. Considering this as a weakness, we propose the following method. Here we have the proposed dbscan post-processing method. In the step 1, we establish the percentage of noise samples allowed for each dataset. The selected threshold might differ from one dataset to another. In the second step, we compute the correlation coefficient matrix, which is computed if the percentage of noise fulfills the following condition. The percentage of noise is greater than or equal to the threshold, where the percentage of noise is computed with regard to the total number of samples, and the threshold is established in the step 1. This correlation coefficient matrix is computed from the distance matrix provided by dbscan, so the strength of the relationship between each sample may be known. The last step is devoted to join noise samples to the formed clusters. The noise samples are joined to the specific cluster in case that they meet the following condition. The correlation coefficient is greater than 0.1. If the condition is true, we search a labeled sample, no noise, with a higher level of correlation between the two samples. When the sample is found, the noise point is joined to the same cluster. This process is repeated with all the noise samples. As a result of applying the DBS campus processing method, we get a new array with the cluster indices. On the right side, you can see the proposed method. Now we are going to see the experiments and results. To test our methods, we use the k nearest neighbor as core IPS. We ran a plain k nearest neighbor with k equal went, positive data representation, and city block distance matrix. This simple configuration is used as the best lines for our analysis. In the best configuration, we choose the optimal parameters for DB scan and k nearest neighbor which provide the lowest error in the position estimation for every dataset. We use a Core i7 with 16GB of RAM, the operating system is Fedora, and the software used is Octav version 5. This experiment is performed by using 12 Wi-Fi fingerprinting radio maps from University Jaume I, Tampere University, University of Minho, and University of Mannheim. We combine K nearest neighbor with DeepScan, DeepScan post processing method, and PCA. To have a better approximation of the optimal epsilon value, we use the algorithm proposed by Satopa et al. to find the elbow point. Then, multiple values of epsilon and mean points were tested to achieve the lowest positioning error for each dataset. It's important to highlight that there is no data normalization or standardization applied in the plain dbscan. However, data normalization is applied for the combination of dbscan plus PCA. In order to analyze the results, we use the normalized values for the mean positioning error and the time required to estimate the positioning error, as you can see here in this table. Here we can see an average increment of 24% in the positioning error when we compare the plain k nearest neighbor and the best scan without modifications. Nevertheless, the time used to estimate the position in the online phase was reduced by 94%. In the second part, we can see the results after applying the post processing method to the best scan. The error in the position estimation was reduced 10% approximately, with a small increment in the time required to estimate the positions, around 11%. In the last analysis, we can see the combination of DBSCAN plus PCA. Despite the radio map dimensionality was highly reduced, the positioning error increased almost three times, and also the time search. Moreover, we can observe that the error in the position estimation doesn't change significantly after the dimensionality reduction in some datasets. This is the case of the lib1 and lib2. The results was expected due to its distribution and the methodology of taking samples. However, we expected a better performance for TUT4 and TUT5, since DevScan is used to detect old layers 
and exclude them from the clusters, but the error increased more than five times in comparison with the plain k nearest neighbor and in both uh, implementation of dbscan. Here we have a graphical representation of the cluster distribution. We can observe that the distribution through the clusters is not equal in all the datasets, obtaining clusters of different sizes. In this figure, the x-axis represents the number of clusters and the y-axis the number of samples assigned to the cluster. So the first plot shows the formant clusters after applying dbscan without any modification, obtaining multiple points labeled as noise. The second plot, the middle graph, shows how the noise samples are redistributed through the remaining clusters when we apply the scan post-processing. Finally, the last plot shows the distribution of clusters after applying dbscan post-processing and PCA. Finally, the conclusion. The matching time and the position estimation time in the online phase of Wi-Fi fingerprinting is significantly reduced, around 94% than when using a plain K nearest neighbor, which is suitable for low profile devices. The positioning error was reduced by 10% after applying the post processing method. However, the time used to form the cluster and then to compute the correlation coefficient matrix is considerably high in the offline phase. When we combine dbscan plus PCA, the dimensionality of the radio map was highly reduced in all the datasets but the error in the position estimation increased more than three times. Well, that's all and thank you for listening.